This is Rob Tubber for Boxing Social in association with Bet Victor. Delighted to be joined here today by Eddie Hearn. We've just sat down with Jarrell Miller after the White Chisora 2 public workout. Um, let's start off with Jarrell Miller. I mean, we'll come back on to him throughout the interview, but what an engaging character. Good character, good guy, actually. I mean, he talks a lot, but he's smarter than people think. Uh, good fighter, going to be very, very tough to beat. And yeah, he's in a good place right now. You know, he's been extremely active. Um, he could be on a verge of an AJ fight in 2019. He's mandated for the WBA regular world title. And yeah, you know, in, in a vibrant heavyweight market, he's a major player. Something that sort of cropped up and we've just done the, the round table where it's kind of like he, he could potentially fit into a lot of slots in the heavyweight mm. division. What would you say is kind of the most likely scenario for him at this point? Obviously, you've got White Chisora still up in yeah. the air, but, um, but what would you say is the most likely option? Probably the AJ fight in America. You know, I think if AJ's going to debut in America and it's not Wilder, he's the perfect guy. I mean, I don't agree with some of his comments like AJ needs me. Not quite, you know, I, I admire his confidence, but, you know, in a sense, I understand what he means. It, he, what he's saying is, I would be the perfect guy for AJ to fight in America. So he has big value in that fight. Um, our focus remains completely the same. Deontay Wilder next. That's all AJ wants. But if Wilder won't fight AJ, then of course we've got our eyes on the Dillian White fight this weekend and also a potential Jarrell Miller fight, whether that's in summer or whether that's later on in the year. What update can you give people on um, kind of where you are with Joshua Wilder? Um, I'd imagine this interview is going to kind of go back in front and, and all around. Um, but where do we stand with that currently? Nowhere really. I mean, I'm not going to talk too much on it because I sort of agreed with Shelley that we wouldn't. There isn't a great deal of progress. There's some messages and a couple of phone calls and some numbers backwards and forwards. Um, nothing overly positive. It's going to come down to Wilder. You know, we're willing to sit at the table, try and negotiate the fight. But if he doesn't want the fight, we can't really do anything about it. I'm not saying he's scared of Joshua. The fighters aren't scared of anyone. But maybe he just prefers the Fury fight. Less money in the Fury fight and no undisputed championship. So it's a bit baffling. He's always said one face, one name, one whatever it is he says. So that's it. This is it. Now's the time. And he should be trying to become undisputed champion. And he could do that next. He could do that in April. If it's not Wilder next, and by all intents and purposes, it's unlikely to be Fury next, um, promotional politics, just one of many things in the way of that fight. Does a Jarrell Miller fight or a Dillian White fight become a harder proposition for you to sell on the back of Wilder Fury success? No, because AJ's the biggest draw in world boxing. Um, the Dillian White fight is huge, to be honest. The first fight was great. It's two Brits fighting for the Unified World Heavyweight Championship. Um, you know, I think he said we did 65,000 at Wembley. We didn't. We did over 70,000 for Povetkin. For Povetkin. Not Dillian White. For Povetkin. Um, and Jarrell Miller will sell out the MSG because I think we'd take 10,000 with us. So, but it's not. You know, I, I, I wouldn't be... I wouldn't be devastated with those choices, but it's not what we want. We want the undisputed heavyweight world champion. If we didn't, we shouldn't even be in the game. You know, and I know they try to make out that AJ turned down all these deals and stuff like that, but the fact is, he's always been here. He's always been ready, but now is the perfect time. But if they won't negotiate and they won't talk and they don't want the fight, it's frustrating, but there's really not a lot that we can do. And AJ's not that guy who's going to sit on Instagram and go, you want your running, we're trying to do this, and we've offered you that, and you're a bitch, and blah, blah, blah. Maybe he should. But when you've got other people doing that, the fans, the ones that maybe aren't the sharpest as some of the others, will go, yeah, AJ, yeah, I've watched his Instagram, and you're running, man. Yeah, you couldn't be more wrong. But sometimes, maybe it's to his detriment that he's not a smack talker, and he don't sit on Instagram talking shit all day. Um, but he's made it clear, you know, went to America last week, he's on several big, big shows, that's what we want. And it's not even wilder, it's the belt. If Fury would have won that fight, we'd be chasing Fury, but he would have a, an automatic rematch with Wilder. So we, we want that fight, we want the undisputed fight, and that, that's all we should be looking for, really, for our next fight. Why the sudden 
kind of shift to want to box AJ? In, I know you've wanted to box AJ in America for a while, but when during seemingly endless negotiations for the Wilder fight, a big part of it for AJ on his side was that fact that he wanted the fight in the UK for the fans. Now it seems like pushing him more to Madison Square Garden, boxing in America. What's changed? Nothing really, only that we feel that in 2019 he should have a fight in America. The, the discussions with Wilder and the offer to Wilder is for two fights. One in America, one in Britain. And that fight, the first one, Britain, April 13th. Next one, Vegas, wherever we all choose. So there's no, it's not like we're rushing now and changed our mind. We still think we should box in America in 2019. If we can't get Wilder, maybe part of it is to go out there and, and make a bigger name for himself and say, OK, if you won't fight us, we're going to come to you and we're going to start chasing you down in your own country. Now, you can't say on one hand, if you're Wilder, that Joshua is running from the fight. And then in the other hand, you're saying he's begging for the fight. And Joshua addressed this in America. He said, you know, are you begging for the fight? He went, I'm not begging for Deontay Wilder, but I'm, I'm begging to be undisputed. Yeah, I want that, desperately. So maybe it would, if we couldn't get Wilder, maybe that would make Joshua go, all right, let's go to America and have a fight. And a lot of it was being there on Saturday, to be honest with you. I mean, it was incredible. The MSG is the nuts, the best arena in the world. And the atmosphere was amazing. And I think he sort of looked around and thought, he really enjoyed last week. And one of the reasons is, although he was getting noticed, he's not a massive star in America. So he was on the subway, he was on the bus, he was in coffee shops. He could just be normal. And I think he really enjoyed that. And I think, you know, I tried to explain to him that not all fight nights have the same atmosphere as a Canelo fight. But, you know, we we understand that. We don't want to just be a one-trick pony. We, he loves fighting in Britain more than anything. But he also understands there is another world out there, and that's many territories, not just the US. Has your deal with the zone kind of forced your hand at all with boxing AJ in America? Has that kind of, not forced your hand, but kind of accelerated your plans to box him over there? No, because um, he can box wherever he wants. It's not part of any deal that he has to box anywhere. Um, they'd love him to box in America, as every broadcaster that's worked with him in the past would like. But he's there's a number in place if he boxes in the UK and there's a number in place if he boxes in America it's more money if he boxes in America but less money in other revenue streams um no I, I just think that it's always been on the agenda but if we can't get Wilder listen mate maybe Wilder turns around and says I'll do it but you have to fight in US first then Josh has got a decision to make but it'd be nice if we could have those discussions or get to that level where we're actually talking about if you do this, we'll do it. And if you do that, we will. But, you know, at the moment, it's just what Wilder doing his interview saying, fuck Joshua, I ain't fighting Joshua. And that's sort of going against everything he's ever said. I spoke to Mauricio Suleiman a couple of days ago and also spoke to Ben Davison. Um, the feeling that I got from both of the conversations was that while the Fury 2 probably isn't going to happen next, mm-hmm. that's the, the impression that I got. You'll have to mm-hmm. check out the interviews on Boxing Social. I know you're an avid fan. Massive. Yes. Um, if Wilder Fury 2 doesn't happen next... Well, I thought we, we, surely we're going to get the fight. Well, are we? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I haven't s- My, I'm presuming they do do the rematch. But a lot of it depends on Wilder's mindset. If he doesn't... I mean, you can't... I, I don't agree with the, oh, leave Joshua now. Like, he's the biggest... He's number one in the division. Undisputedly. Well, not undisputed. No. Uh, you, you know, but... Um, universally, I believe, number one in the division. He owns four belts, or three, whatever you want to call it. So you can't just pretend he doesn't exist. You've always said one face, one name, whatever you say, and you've got to give the fans one champion. You apparently want this fight so bad, so sit down and make it happen. But now it's being put on him. It's more, nah, leave him. We can't leave him. It's it's a bigger fight than Fury, and it's for the undisputed championship. So, I don't know. My guess was that the rematch will happen. But then again, you know, you've got Fury now, who's probably sitting there thinking, I'm a bigger star than you, and I won that fight. So, what's the deal? I don't know. Is Deontay Wilder versus Joshua a bigger fight than Tyson Fury than Joshua? Explain that. There's more TV money. There's a bigger gate. There's more international TV money. There's more sponsorship. It's for the undisputed heavyweight world championship. 
is absolutely fucking colossal. By that token, had Fury got the decision over Deontay Wilder, would a, and this is completely hypothetical, would a, a Titan Fury Anthony Joshua undisputed fight be a bigger fight than a Deontay Wilder Anthony Joshua undisputed fight? Possibly. Possibly. I can't answer that because he didn't win. I, I don't know. But Globe, don't get that again wrong. Fury Joshua is a bigger fight in the UK than Wilder Joshua. There's not a lot in it, to be honest with you, but it is a bigger fight in the UK. Globally, Wilder Joshua is much bigger, okay? Especially as it carries the undisputed mantle. So you've got two Brits if it was Fury Joshua, which isn't particularly suited that much to a global fight um, and an American fight, and there's a lot of revenue to be made in America. Um, But it's not about Wilder, it's about the belt. If Fury had the belt and he was available and he didn't have a rematch clause, Josh would be all over him to fight him. He does want to fight Fury as well, by the way, but he just wants to win the belt. It's not even... I mean, he does want to spank Wilder, but he just wants to become undisputed. That's it. Once you've done that, that's the holy grail. And no one should take that for granted as a fighter when that opportunity arises. No no one should be saying, oh, no, I ain't fighting you. If we can't do a deal, we can't do a deal. And I get that, that's boxing, that's that's business. But surely we've got to see if that's possible. Well, I was in LA for Wilder Fury. Uh, they did this heavyweight legends thing with Riddick mm, Bowe, yeah. Evander Holyfield, great event. Um, Jim Gray was hosting it. To say that the notion that Anthony Joshua ducked Deontay Wilder is kind mm. of a prevalent theme out there would be a massive, massive understatement. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Why... If it's not correct, why and where have they got this kind of notion that just, Joshua just from, has, from, has ducked them? From Wilder and Fury, the whole build-up to the fight was about Joshua's ducked us, so we're going to fight each other. For months leading up to the fight, Wilder spent his life on Instagram telling the world that AJ had ducked the fight. Okay, And AJ don't respond, probably to his detriment. He doesn't sit on Instagram and tell you and rant and rave about the truth and this, and I'm not having that, and he just don't do it. So probably by his silence, that probably made people think, oh, AJ's hired in. He's not. He's just doing exactly what he's always done. But the truth of the matter is, we received a personal email from Deontay Wilder. Not Stephen Espinosa at Showtime. Not, we ain't even got an email address, but HeymanBoxing.com. Not Shelley Finkel. Deontay Wilder at whatever it is, gmail.com. We would like to offer you 50 million for this fight. I went back and said, thank you. We're extremely interested. Could you send me a contract, please? They went back and said, no, you've got to accept it. So like, hang on a minute. We don't know anything about this deal. Just send me a contract. We'll go through it. Nothing. So then you turned down 50 million. I mean, it is, they've done a good job. Because they have given the impression that Joshua has ducked the fight for 50 million. Not in the slightest. We can't move forward without the, the terms, without the contract, all these things. Everyone knows that. Now it's interesting, the shoe's on the foot, the other foot a little bit. Now Joshua has come out openly and said, okay, I'm ready, let's go. And then the other side are going, uh, actually, we're going to fight Wilder again, a Fury again. So, okay, no problem. Like we're not gonna, Joshua's not going to go on Instagram and start moaning and saying, Wilder's running, he said he wants us, and now we're here. You know, like I said, he said we're running, now he said we're begging. It's quite a big difference. Are we begging? Yeah, I suppose we are, for the undisputed fight, not for the unsaid Wilder. He ain't going to change Joshua's life, but the belt is, because that's all he wants. So it's a bit frustrating, because I know Joshua, I know how much he wants the fight, and sometimes you have to bite your tongue because you, I read the, you know, the Instagram comments and Twitter. Oh, Joshua's ducking him. He ain't ducked no one in his life. He's had 22 fights. He's boxed everyone that's been put in front of him. And he wants Wilder desperately. But now I think the truth is coming out a little bit where they're saying, no, no, actually, we don't want Joshua. Well, what does he bring to the table? It's like the entire division and all the marbles outside of one belt. So... We'll see. Ultimately, it'll be their decision whether they want this fight or not. Saw some stuff on Twitter, um, comments attributed to you uh, about 
potentially, well, obviously we've talked about boxing Jarrell Miller in New York at Madison Square Garden. Had the Wembley date in for a long, locked in for a long time. There was some talk about Carl Brook potentially landing on that date. If if Joshua doesn't box Wilder or Fury, does that mean he does box elsewhere on April the 13th? No, no, because he'd probably fight Dillian White at Wembley. If Dillian White wins this Saturday. Could fight Chisora at Wembley. But I just, that was a throwaway comment where I said, look, if he boxes in America, Jarrell Miller is the guy. And maybe we do that in the summer. I said, well, what about Wembley? I said, well, maybe we do Brooke Khan there. I mean, that, that is a scenario that could work, but there's a lot of things that have got to happen. You know, tonight, Wilder might come back and say, actually, let's get around the table. Or Dillian White could get knocked out. Or Dillian White could look sensational, but we can't get a deal done. Or Jarrell Miller. I don't know, like, so many things can happen. And I wouldn't, nothing would surprise me at the moment. Nothing about what's next. It's exciting times. Where does Alexander Usyk fit into all of this? He's a, he's a big player in our plans. But I feel that, I mean, look, one, he hasn't relinquished his cruiserweight belts yet. Two, I would think he'll want one or two fights before he fights AJ. But three, that's where we're heading. Joshua's all about six or seven years left in the game, not one fight. So all these guys, White, Ortiz, Miller, Usyk, Wilder, Fury, he's got to go for all of them, and he will. But we've just got to line them up. Also saw some comments from Frank Warren about the April 13th date, about potentially doing, a, if it were to happen, a Wilder Fury 2 fight on April the 13th. Just your comments on that. I mean, he can do what he wants. What do you want me to say? He's still, I mean, he's still sulking about this weekend. So he said that to, you know, but listen, it's a fair cop. It's a fair game. We, we're doing a show at Wembley on April 13th. We, not, we can't move it. That's happening. If he wants to do one, no problem. If Wilder and Fury want to take on AJ on their pay-per-view, okay, see how we get on. Moving away from Joshua, Wilder, Fury... Got a heavyweight fight this weekend mm. to talk about. Dillian White versus Derek Chisora rematch. Um, Derek Chisora looked in, in good shape yeah, today. Really it was quite great. quite surprising. I mean, not just good shape, but happy, uh, excited, twinkle in his eye, and also in Hayes' eye as well, which worries me a little bit because Dillian's got a lot to lose in this fight. You know, he took this fight because, one, he thinks he can win. Two, he likes the fight. Three, he likes to give the fans what he wants. And four, it's a pay-per-view fight. And he didn't want to sit around waiting. But Chisora keeps goading him, saying, you know, you could have just waited, don't you? And then just got the fight with AJ. You're gambling it all against me. So Chisora has nothing to lose in this fight. He's going to give white hell. It's going to be an absolute war. Because you know what Chisora's going to do. He's going to go out from the first bell. He's already given the game plan away. And it wasn't ever a secret anyway. So white is going to probably want to try to box him, but won't have any choice but to fight him. Every time I've sat down with Dillian White over the last couple of years, he's been on the verge of a world title shot. Mm. If Joshua Wilder is made, it's going to mean that he has to wait again. Mm. I know Dillian kind of well-ish enough mm. to know at the minute that I don't imagine him being too happy with that. No. And it's, you know, when you've got two champions and you might have one champion, it's not easy. Um, but all we can do is, you know, the, the fights that we're putting him in are big pay-per-view fights where he's making a lot of money. But... He's made a lot of money now, and now he wants a shot at the world title. It won't come against Wilder, so it's got to come against AJ. And if he wins on Saturday and looks good, I think there's a very good chance that could come in April. If, again, it's a very hypothetical time in the heavyweight division at the minute. Um, if White doesn't fight Joshua in April, where does Kubrat Pulev and the IBF situation fit into all of this? The first is a WBO mandatory, which is due in September next year at the moment Dillian White's number one um, and then after that no mandatory has been called yet but he is number one if they call a mandatory now it's Dillian White if he wins on Saturday he's going to be mandatory um, then after that the IBF come after that so they would be April May 2020 then you'll have a WBA one after that so it's like but ultimately, once you become undisputed, it gives you the opportunity to say, OK, I've won all the belts. You know what I mean? So I've won all the belts, and then I'll pick and choose 
if I'm going to drop one, if I'm going to fight a mandatory, anything like that. I'm oh, sorry, Eddie. You've got to get Jarrell Miller in now. Come on then, come and, ta come and take a seat. Let's this be the perfect... Be good. Be so, this is Head and Shoulders. How you guys doing? My name is Felicia, and today we're doing a Head and Shoulders rule. Why don't you have a chat? We're gonna, we're gonna, give, we're gonna give him a haircut. <laughs> Come on, I can give you a haircut. Anyway. Fuck off. <laughs> I've seen your haircut. You can tag over, man. Oh, oh Hope you got it on camera, though. That was good stuff, man. Okay.